spread it all over Twitter, Gab, Rumble, these far right internet spaces. And that's how we got this biolab conspiracy theory that you're seeing all over everywhere, not yeah. just here, but also China's foreign ministry and out of the mouth of uh, people from Russia uh, pushing this now. So what about shutting down this kind of content on platforms where it lives, right? We talked about the responsibility for some of these social media platforms, whether it's TikTok, Twitter, et cetera. What are you hearing on that? Well, you know, the account that pushed this first was a banned QAnon account that was under a different name. So it's about keeping up the very same Black standard ball, right. that you set for yourself exactly uh, years ago for other problems that these people were lying about. Now they're lying about something new. It's the same people with new accounts. You just have to keep maintenance on this stuff. TikTok is just getting into the game on this stuff. It's going to be a wild ride. And that's why, you know, the Biden administration, for example, enlisted all of those TikTok influencers themselves because they think they can do a better job trying to get out a good message and trying to ban the bad messages. Ben Collins, great to have you with us. Thank you, Frank. Good to see you. Thanks to all of you for watching this hour of, of this show here on MSNBC. I'll see you in an hour over on NBC News Now. But for now, the Headline White House starts as we speak. New York, 10 p.m. in Key, where Russian forces appear to be growing more brutal in their attack, seemingly nothing off limits. Strikes now taking place in the center of Ukraine's capital. This missile falling on the street and destroying a bus. The city turning into what Ukraine's defense minister now calls the scene of an apocalypse movie. As Russian forces inch closer to Key, hoping to apply the kind of pressure that's resulted in devastation and suffering in cities all across country of Ukraine. Two strangers who play key describe their harrowing escape from that city now surrounded by Russian troops. A road uh, was full of mine and, and we stay with, uh, with, uh, with children, with, uh, with uh, uh, the, the, the old people and with uh, animals, uh, uh, dogs and cats and uh, it was a uh, And in hard-hit Mariupol, where an estimated 400,000 people, human beings, trapped without heat, without food, without water. Hundreds managed to escape by car, even as an aid convoy was blocked from going into the city. That's due to shelling from Russian forces, according to Ukrainian officials. Also from that city, this indelible image of war capturing a split second that illustrates the horrors taking place every day now in Ukraine. A pregnant woman was carried out on a stretcher in the aftermath of a Russian missile strike in a maternity hospital on March 9th. The Associated Press reports today that that woman in the photo has died, as has her unborn child. With this country facing invasion and war and humanitarian calamity, President Zelensky rallied his people as he has sought to do every single day since the war began. Today he posted a video of himself taken to the streets saying this, quote, we will rebuild every street mm -hmm. in every city, every house, every apartment of every Ukrainian. President Zelensky is set to continue his efforts to garner additional support from his country and his people with an address to a joint session of Congress in this country slated for Wednesday morning. It will be the first such address by foreign leaders since 2019. This morning, his government sat down with Russian negotiators for another round of talks. Ukrainians expressing more optimism than they had with any of the previous talks. One member of Ukraine's delegation saying he expected, quote, concrete results in the next few days. That sliver of hope for peace comes even as there are signs that Russia is planning on widening and intensifying the war there. 35 people were killed when Russian missiles struck a military base just 15 miles from the border of Poland, Poland and NATO member. But there were no NATO forces present at the time of the attack, and the Pentagon is saying that U.S. troops who were at that facility on the training mission left weeks ago. A bid by Russia to bring the war right to NATO's doorstep comes amid news of a potentially significant development in the global response to the war in Ukraine. 
three U.S. officials tell NBC News that the U.S. has reason to believe that Russia has asked China for military equipment and support. But the Russians and the Chinese are denying that any request was made. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan today met with China's top diplomat in Rome and tells NBC's Chuck Todd that the administration has a message for China or anyone considering helping Russia evade sanctions. Watch. We have made it clear to not just Beijing, but every country in the world, that if uh, they think that they can basically bail Russia out, they can give Russia a workaround to the sanctions that we've imposed, uh, they should have another thing coming, because we will ensure that neither China nor anyone else can compensate Russia for these. Losses. All this. Against the backdrop of a devastatingly urgent humanitarian crisis on the ground in Ukraine, massive numbers of civilians are still, right now, this hour, in harm's way, including in Kiev, where an apartment complex was struck in the At least one person was killed and several injured. NBC's Richard Engel was there, reporting from outside that building. Watch. The attack happened just after 5 in the morning when most of the residents in this building were sleeping. The incoming artillery round, sometimes described as a rocket, hit right by the front door, making evacuation more difficult, more dangerous. There was no military activity here at the time, no outgoing fire, and this can only be described as an attack on civilians right near the heart of Kiev. I don't know who I woke up for a cigarette right before. Maybe I knew something, says Sergei, who lives with his mother, and described the slow motion effect of hearing the incoming round, then the explosion. It blew out my window and doors. If I'd been near them, I'd be dead, he said. Nina was sleeping when the attack happened, shaken but unhurt. She told us she's happy not to be alone this morning and asked if I have a mother who also happens to be named Nina. She said this attack shows why Ukrainians need to fight as open Russian war with no distinction between and civilians and soldiers is moving into Kyiv. And joining us right now um, on the streets of Kyiv, NBC News Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel. Richard Engel, I have been a fan of your reporting long before I had the chance to work with you. I have never seen you embrace like that. If it, if it happens, I haven't seen it. T tell me about the victims of today's strike there in that apartment building. Well, I'll start with Nina. So Nina was, uh, she, she lives in that apartment building that was struck. She lives on the ground floor. Uh, her, she, she's a widow and she lives with her adult son. She was asleep this morning and then suddenly she said it was like they turned all the lights on outside and the, the window came crashing in, the window frame came crashing in, the doors came crashing in. It all fell on top of her, uh, the entire heavy metal window frame, but she was unhurt. The, the bed, the bedroom, the whole area was covered in broken glass, and she didn't have so much of a scratch on her. Uh, she said it was because she was sleeping, luckily, under a heavy blanket. And she also thought maybe it had to do with all the icons around her, her room that she does uh, by hand with embroidery. Um, including one of St. Nina, which she gave to me as a, as a memento. Uh, she was uh, incredibly strong. She was uh, very, very brave. She, she was laughing it off, so to speak. She said, they're going to rebuild, everything will be okay, and everyone is going to come back from the building and have a celebration when the Ukrainians win this war, and she's going to have a little party in her, in her apartment. So it's an incredible amount of resolve, considering what just happened. 